welcome to Live with Greg or Live with Greg, depending on semantics. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's me. Dre in California. No way. Yes, I finally made it. Yeah, finally, boy. Yeah, so Aaron lost his bet. Yes, he did. I'm here. <laughs> We're still on more evidence. Lies can lie. I know, right? Yeah, I'm here. I got the vi- I you've seen the video of me when Anthony saw me. I saw that. Oh, see? Yeah. So, that was fake news. <laughs> yeah. He saw. He's, I'm here. I've been here a good, what, a, going on two weeks now? Been yeah. Home. Feels good. I don't know. Feels good to be home. It actually does. I, I'm a sad. I mean, that say it feels really good to be home after being gone so long. Just driving around, seeing how the old neighborhood is, you know, the old houses. It's like weird. <laughs> See that the school's like wow the school here wow pretty interesting but it's good. And I got a good thing about it. I got to show my daughter how far we used to have to walk home from school. But she never believed the story to tell how far we had to walk home from school. Never believed it. So I took her the route to Cal State. So yeah, and from here we had to walk up. That hill, yeah. Yep. So I say, see, I was a nine to you. <laughs> if we miss the bus, we're in trouble. Or we go the other way. When the Wilkers, the Wilkers moved, went to their house over here, took a break, and then walked the rest of the way up the hill. Oh, yeah. So it's pretty interesting. That was still pretty much at the top of the hill by the time you Yeah, it was, house. but we just had a break. Yeah. <laughs> at that point. Yeah. But either way, it's either, either your old house was the break, too. So, because that was like halfway... And once you got into the Highlands, your house was halfway to my house, so it was still a break. <laughs> your house has always been the break house. The <laughs> yeah. break. The new, the new. <laughs> you are instrumental in bringing more than rock and roll into my life. Like, you know. Yeah, because okay. I was one of those disco sacks, you know, rock and roll. <laughs> and then it was actually Aaron who played me. One of Prince's, it was either off Controversy or Dirty Mind. Okay. That's where it got the screaming guitar mm-hmm. solo at right. the end. And I was like, oh, that's <laughs> like as good as any rock and right. roll. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then those parties that you threw. Egyptian yeah. lover. The parties. <laughs> we like the cars. People still talk about those parties. Yeah, today, they Which do. is, I don't, I, I guess. At the time, I think they were so big, but I guess they were big. I think what was big about it is everyone there was just there to have a good time. Yeah, it was never any fights. No. Never any fights at the party. And the music was pumping. Exactly. Okay. You were a badass on two toe tables. Yeah, that's what they say. I you don't were. Know. <laughs> you were. I just did my thing. Yes, you did. And it was you know what it is? I just practiced a lot. That's what it was. Well, that's like anything, right? I used to practice. I used to drive my neighbors. I remember the the, the tailors up the street from us. They used to call our house. Could you turn the music down? You had a blast for hours now. I'd be in my bedroom practicing and practicing and practicing. <laughs> I feel sorry for the, to the guys next to us because they must have really been upset. Apparently but not because they... They never know. said anything because yeah. the tailors, they're what? They're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight houses away from us, I guess, up the hill. They didn't want close. That's crazy. Yes, I guess. Do you remember what clicked for you to start DJing? Um, when I realized I sucked at being in the band. Like, you know, Anthony was could play organ beautifully. And I could play, and I could still play. I could play by ear, and I can fool around. But I'm not great at it. And I'm not a singer, so I'm not singing. So when I realized that I couldn't, I couldn't um, do that in music. That's how I went to Avenue. I went with DJ and being in the studio. I said, if I can't sing the music, I can make the music. That's how I figured in my head. So that's where the transition went over. So <laughs> at the beginning, were you thinking of being an engineer and on the board? No. No, so that came about in high school. Um, we had a um, 
a substitute teacher, I believe. I can't think of the guy's name. And he's the reason why I actually left Hayward High. <laughs> For real. He was like, he was like, um, he was like, what are you doing here? You don't even belong here. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> he was like, you don't belong here. You know, you should, you should go be an engineer or something. You want, you're into this music thing. You should go do that. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not enjoying school. You don't like it. You know, you don't put no effort into it. Why are you even here? You should do what you want. So, I kind of looked at him like, hmm, okay. So, did you have your mom's blessing with that move? No. <laughs> No, no, no one's blessing. No, that no. came hard. Yeah, that's uh, that was a, that was a, because you know me, I took it to the extreme. I was like, you know what, I don't have to be here, and then never went back to, to Hayward. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you do? I worked. I got a job. I was working at the fixing cable boxes. I was making good money too. I was making fixing cable boxes, and I was like having a good time, making the good money. It's like. Yeah, I don't need school. It's not a good thing to say. Kids go to school. No, you don't have to go to school. <laughs> this is true. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I was, and I did that. And then I, um, I worked with my dad also. So then, you know, then we're doing parties. So I always had money. So <laughs> Yeah, but what about, like, creating a career? Were you thinking, uh, I'm going to create a career in Music. Not then, but then I said after a while I figured I wanted to go into music. I wanted to be an engineer. I figured that's what I wanted to do, and then I um, I reached out to a school in L.A. and they said, "Well, your high school diploma was like, oops." <laughs> so then I went back and took my GED. I graduated like at um, I graduated before everybody here what I did actually. I've actually graduated out of high school before my class graduated. Wow! Because I took the test and took on my passed the test and I was done. So while they were still in school, I actually had a diploma. <laughs> I was done with school. So when did, how old were you when you left Hayward High? 17, 16, 17? You were a sophomore? I was like, no, 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 wait. You had to be 18 to pass, you had to be 18 to take the test. The GED? Yeah, I think you had to be, I think you had to be 18 at the point. So wherever I, right on my 18th birthday, I took the test. Okay. So I probably left out with 17 then. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, so in a pretty concise period of time of leaving Hayward High and coming to the conclusion, I want to right. enter the music industry. It was all within that, that, that year period. Yeah. yeah, okay, so that's solid. You want yeah. like I went from DJing to doing that to, yeah. All right, that. so the school accepts you. Okay, so I'm going to go to L.A., move to L.A., big move. And the funny thing about it, when I moved to L.A., I haven't, I haven't moved back. That's the last time I was in, I lived here. So that was 80, 80, 45. That's the last time I lived in Hayward. Really? Really. Yeah, once I moved to LA, I never came back. So you haven't been in to Hayward since then? I have not lived back in the Bay Area okay, okay. since I left in 80, 45. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and you go to the school. You go to school in Hollywood. And again, I just hung out. I used to hang out because I had really no friends. So I would go to school, and at school would end, everybody would go home. I'd stay at school, and I'd stay in the editing room editing, making mixes and stuff. And then I would, uh, I met these um, teachers, one teacher who had a Fairlight. A Fairlight's one of the first samplers. It's like this big computer with a big pen that you draw on it. Like, nothing like today, you know. Back then, it was like this big, I was like, I was like wow, that's so cool. So I was to hang out with him and his other guy's a guitar player and we um I'm this young kid just hanging out with these guys and they're accomplished musicians. Hung out with them, they start hooking me up with uh in their sessions that would be after after school, I'd be with those guys, working recording with those guys, learning how to do the whole trade. And then um that's actually how it all really came about because again, I'm not a school person, so school's not really my thing. So I, school was cool in the daytime, but at night I learned more after hours hanging out with those guys that I've learned in school the whole time. Right. So I just hung out with that guy. And it, was, it was actually cool because they actually hooked me up with a lot of people at that point. That's how actually my that's how I actually took off because again, it wasn't the school portion of it. It was hanging out with that's those two experience. guys in the studio, yeah. and they got me into. Um, I met uh, 
this guy named Jimmy Barter, who was a singer, and he had this guy, Sam Shepard, who was the producer, and he was like at Motown, different things. And he hooked up this guy in, in Watts, and he had a studio in Watts, so it was a studio, a little eight-track studio, and a little apartment next to it. I was living in South Central Watts in the studio, working in the studio back then. But it all came from that, hanging out with those guys in there, got me in that position over here, and when I got in that position and run in the studio in the, in the middle of the hood, and that, that, was, that was some crazy times there. Yeah. I think I've seen everything you could imagine. I've recorded any kind of music. I've done mariachi, I've done gospel, of course done rap, R&B, did uh, like rock opera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, like a meatloaf? Type? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did it all. It's, it's funny. It's, it's funny. You have the, 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 the... Country? Yes. Ah. Even country. Right. Even country. I did everything there. That must have been wild country boys showing up. I, I, I didn't that. I think the wildest part was the... Um, was actually the uh, mariachi guys. Wow. <laughs> Great food. I forget that. I'm not gonna say the guy's name, but he used to come in the studio, take his gun out, sit on top of the console, and go play the music. And he come back, oh yeah, I like that, I like that. What? <laughs> it's like craziness. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you see any of the um, rappers in the studio that yeah. like helped set the early scene of hip hop? No, that? it's funny though. I actually, when we we're DJing. Here, um, I had joined a record pool, and that's where I met like Dr. Dre and all of them because they used to be at the record pool. He used to have these little party things. Let's go. That's where I met those guys back way when he wasn't even he wasn't even Dr. Dre. He was like uh, it was the uh, the wrecking crew, I guess it was. Yes, back yeah, then. Yeah. Back when he just lived all that whole period. Yeah. Right. So I met those guys when I was still here in Hayward. <laughs> Of all places, yeah. right? <laughs> but nothing really came from that. That didn't. No, for nothing. You. No. You know. They probably remember it. Right. At all, like, huh? We were at this place. Yeah, with the record board. <laughs> okay. All right, so now you're in Watts. We're in Watts. You're earning what? a living. Yeah, living in the hood. With drive bys, walk bys, uh, bike bys, you name it. Helicopters flying around you all the time. I was in the Thick, thick of it. Yeah. Did you have sessions where you had to stop because the noise was too? Yeah, sessions and there, it was, but it was it was cool. But see, as scary as it sounded, it was okay because everybody there knows the music guy, so I didn't get no one messed with me in, in the hood, right. in that area. They just left me alone. Like, oh, he does music, he's okay. I go to, to the little burger stand, and I remember one night, one day, I went to the burger stand. I go get something to eat, and uh, these guys go, "Hey, the lady at the." Uh, the lady paying, she freaked out. Goes, oh my god! Here it comes. Yeah, she was just like so troubled. And the guy goes, No, no, no. He's he's cool. This guy, he's music. He's music. He's the music guy. He's good. He's good. <laughs> wow. Did you ever have to worry about what you were wearing? No. Because okay. I was a music guy. They left me alone. So everyone just knew. Yeah. And that's kind of you know, it's interesting that that's how tight that community is. Right. Where everyone knows. Yeah, everybody knew. Yeah, this guy just yeah, he does music so uh, no problems in fact the only time I ever got robbed was actually not even there I was in Hollywood yeah <laughs> was it a person of color or what nah, I don't do I don't know I was coming out of the studio one night I think it was actually, in Hollywood so you were coming out of a studio in Hollywood yeah it was actually my birthday I was coming out of the studio in Hollywood so I had like balloons and going to my car this guy car for the shit give me your money Dude, they got no money. I had like twenty dollars in my pocket. Here, take it. Here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, were you were you working in Hollywood now? No, that school. That was in school that was time during school. school. Yeah, oh, that school. Wow. Yeah, How cool. long were you in the school for? Two years. Two, three years. Two years. Two years. I think. I think two years. Two years. I think. Didn't you meet your wife in Hayward? Yes, my wife's from Hayward. Okay. So, are you guys together during this L.A. thing? Yes. Do you have her blessing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, was she going to say no? 
Well, yeah, that is an option. <laughs> We're boyfriend and girlfriend at that point. Are you going to say no? Yeah, that's an option. No, I really don't think so. Well, it is. It doesn't mean you're acquiesce, <laughs> but it, it, a you're person say, No, it. you can't do what you want to do in life. Huh? This may not work out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That works out too well. No, it doesn't usually. Um, but she's up here still while you're down there? Yes. You she was here until we actually got married, which would be 33 years this this year. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, I think it'll be 33 years. And she just said it today, that's why, that's why I know it. <laughs> she said it today. If you're watching, <laughs> he knew it. He was on it. <laughs> which would be 33 years this year. Right. But she, she was here at the time. Uh, she didn't move down until, um, until uh, we got married. That's when she moved down. Are you happy with your career that you've created? I, I don't think about it. It's funny that I don't I don't talk about it. I don't mention it. People who know me, people I could be around people for years and then not even know until someone else brings it up to go, Oh, you did it? I say, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can talk about it. it was, to me it was it was a job. You know, it's like if I worked at Burger King, would I talk about Burger King every day? No. It was my job working at Burger King. That's how I felt when I did was it was just a job. So I don't, I don't. Okay, but your job, <laughs> Michael Jackson came in and said, hey, Drake, can we, like, we do that again? You're like, okay, we could definitely do that. True. Okay, if you were at Burger King, he wouldn't be like, you know, the smoke shake, it's a little <laughs> like, hey, can you top it off a little? He could. Yeah. He well, know, okay. He might have but he might could have went to Burger King. And... You were co you were working on something with him. Yeah, and probably I was. I, that's the funny thing about you, you mentioned Michael, and I thought about it one day. That's probably one of maybe ten people who have recorded Michael Jackson, you know, in the world probably. But again, who, I don't know. It's it was just it was just working to me. I'm just working. So the experience of it. You know, like, it doesn't resonate. No. Cause I, I or even just the career trajectory. You don't ever, like, sit back in the easy chair. Not, and in, not unless somebody brings it up. It's like, you, if you bring stuff up, I'll think about talk about it. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's so cool. So I, I guess it was cool. I don't know. <laughs> I'm being serious, though. That was damn cool that Michael Jackson and you were working together. Well, I guess so, you cool. know. I yeah. guess some people heard of him, maybe. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it was the cooler part was when my kids got old enough to realize, you know, that was kind of cool because they didn't really, they, they had no clue. Right. You know, when, uh, you know, they grew up in that environment. So they were used to seeing, you know, Eddie Murphy every day. They used to, used to seeing him. It was no big deal to see him and Charlie. You know, they were like, like, oh, what? No, they were like, hey, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Blah, blah, blah. You know, right. nothing. Like the neighbor next door, like the tailor. Yeah, exactly. The and they didn't realize until, I guess they got into high school or in older, and they're like, oh, okay. Then they, they clicked in their heads, you know. But I never, you know, I never forced them to go, right. you know, you know your dad. No, you never <laughs> your did. Your dad's special. <laughs> never uh, did. <laughs> so with your experiences, mm -hmm. What gives you flavor in life? What gives me flavor in life? Waking up. Really? That simple? I tell you. Everybody says, why do you have a smile on your face? Because I woke up this morning. They're like, huh? I said, dude, I couldn't. Someone didn't wake up this morning. You know, so that, you know, if, I, if I'm breathing today, it's a good day. <laughs> That's how I look at life. If I'm breathing, it's a good day. And no matter what goes on in life, I'm still breathing. It's good. Because whatever problems you have, they either re-infectify themselves or they'll just be there. But if I'm not breathing, guess what? I can't even deal with those problems ever again. So I'm happy breathing. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Do you keep track of the things going on in the world like this thing in Ukraine yep. or you do keep you know I keep track on it yeah, yep. watch it. 
I'm not really, I'm not religious. I watch it 24 hours a day, but I keep I keep my breast. In the so way. how do you keep that good vibe with that sort of in consciousness? Well, I think you have to look at it as in how blessed we are that we're not going through that ourselves. And I think that people lose track of that. You know, people with the, with the elections and all this thing going all you know, this and that. It's like people forget. They're like, you don't understand. If you're not in this country, you go outside of this country, you don't have those liberties, those freedoms. You know, it could be like those the uh, great games that the basketball, the girl basketball player, is in, stuck in Russia right now. You know, you're in Russia. No one knows where you're at. If that happened here, at least people can contact you and find out oh, what's going on with you. You know, we have a lot of people complain about things like you don't understand it. Go outside of America. Go outside of your little five square mile radius. Get out in the world and see the world for what it is. And you realize how blessed you are to be in America to do things you can do, no matter how screwed up America can be at times, you still are blessed. Because it's going to be a lot worse. <laughs> you know, a lot worse. Have you gone out of the country? And I've been to several countries, yes. Yeah. Was that, did work bring you around? Work, yeah. yeah. Work brought me, I've been, I talked to a friend today, I've been, I've been to London several times, been to Switzerland, uh, of course, uh, of course Mexico, everybody goes to Mexico. Been to the islands, yeah. Canada. And so when you're traveling, you saw like the United uh, States is blessed see, for. And I've been across the United States in different, you know, when I did a tour, uh, I was on tour toward the uh, New Kids on the Block. And we toured uh, the eastern seaboard of, of the country. So you got to see the different from cities. From Florida all the way. Yep, from yeah. New York down to Florida, everything in between there. You see, you know, you see the. You see, I, I was tell, I was tell everybody, I hate it, hate it being on tour, but I tell people, you know, you realize that every place has a mall, every place has a movie theater, every place has a hotel. <laughs> End of the day, they all the same place. <laughs> you go and like you can be in North Carolina. Guess where we at? I'm at the mall. Oh, just the same mall I had in, in South Carolina. Same mall I saw in New York City. <laughs> same movie theater I saw there. Same thing. <laughs> People were a little bit different. Same stuff. Macy's is Macy's. Macy's everywhere. is Macy's, yeah. <laughs> it's the same thing. Uh, do you have any goals in life now that are challenges, like challenges in a good way, you know, like anything that you aspire to? The only thing I have now in this stage in my life just to make sure my kids you know become who they're going to become you know like my oldest son is going to be married in two years that's a goal that's a good thing you know maybe you have grandkids after that point you know make sure my youngest daughter who's 21 now she finds her way in life that's that's those are my my goals now is them you know once you have kids they're the goals your life means nothing. <laughs> yeah. Everything is towards the kids, you know, make sure they, they, they're good in life. That's really it, you know. But no, I know that goes in that. Everything else is good. What else? What, what am I going to do? I have, I have everything I need, you know. I have, I have my family. I have my life. What more is there? <laughs> I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what more is there? Did you have any point when you were working mm -hmm. where you thought, I can't do this, this is the end, I, and then you, keep, you found a way to continue? Hmm. Like, were you challenged beyond what you believed you could do? No, I don't think so. I, 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 I was having a conversation with somebody earlier today. And I was saying, I'm the type of person, if you say I can't do something, that will make me do what you say I can't do. You can't tell, you can't say, Trey, you can't do this. Oh, you bet I can't? Watch me. And I will prove you wrong that I can do whatever you say I can't do. So, no, I, I don't, 
challenges are fun. That challenge makes your mind work. So I, I like challenges. So no, not really. Do you have that psychological voice that is challenging you? Like you're you're fake. You're, this isn't real. You can't do that. No. No, you didn't experience that. No. You are blessed, my friend. Because you know, I, I, you know, I was. I, I told my daughter a couple weeks ago. Not even a couple. Maybe maybe last week. And I was, I was like telling her, I was like, Kim, you know, because we, she's trying to find her path in life. And I was like, you said, I said, you have to understand, I said, everybody's the same. I don't care what race, I don't care what religion you are, I don't care where you grew up in this world. Everybody's life is really basically the same. Everybody has a crazy uncle. <laughs> Everybody has a drug addict in their family. Everybody has somebody that's gay in their family. Somebody's an alcoholic in their family. And I don't care if you have this much money or this much money. You all have the same aspects in your life. So, you may think that your life is worse than somebody else's, but you know what? Not really. Life is life. Is life. And money doesn't make you any happier. It may, it may make some things easier, but it doesn't make you happier. You know? And that's one thing I have realized that. Being what I've gone through in my life. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> of course. Of course. Sorry, I messed up your little panther party. Uh, but yeah, so, you know. And once you realize that, because like, cause that's one good thing I say about doing what I've done in life. Having lived in Hayward, in a upper middle class neighborhood we grew up in, at the time we didn't know we were upper middle class. We were just having fun, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. It was we were like, we looking down on people. It was like, hey, this is cool, you know. I have cousins who still live in 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 the hood. We used to go to their house every weekend. I didn't know they were poor now. Poor. I didn't know what that was. They were just my cousins. And I didn't care what, the, you know, this is my cousin, hang on my cousin, I didn't care. So, you know, we, and then going from there to leaving here to go to LA and living, moving to South Central, which is a total different from Hayward, mm -hmm. total drastic change, and living there for a few years. And from there, going to New Jersey, which is another total drastic change of life. So, so you've seen the highs <laughs> and the lows. I've seen it all. So listen, through it listen, all. Listen. And I know, I know, my, I've seen the mega rich, and I've seen the really poor, and you know what? Just because they're mega rich, I mean, they're very happy. <laughs> Just because they're poor, I mean, they're sad. <laughs> and then there's the opposite. Yeah, there's the opposite. You could be happy and rich. Mm -hmm. I don't happy. know. I, I know one of my friends is. It, you know, I think I think the problem when you have a lot of money is a people will um, treat you a little different in a sense where they, you know, where you may go with a friend. Oh, he got it. He got lunch. He got dinner today. Oh, he got it. He got it. And or your family, and, and you may not even see it, but the, the internal struggle with the family itself, where. Your brothers or sisters, whoever, because oh, oh, that's my brother. He got all this money. You know, he should do that for me. You know, this. <laughs> right. There's a lot of dynamics that you may not. He may be happy when you see him, but when you don't see him, he may not be that happy. Well, you know, he's a lot like you. <laughs> and here's what I'd say: like, uh, what I have learned is you still have problems if you're exactly. extremely wealthy. Yeah. And. He's a happy man, right. you know, and part of it's the same, like that kind of like, I'm glad I woke up. Yeah. And the day, it's all you could be happy about. Yeah. Why'd I woke up? And, yeah, and we could leave it at that. Cause <laughs> right, no problem. <laughs> well, then it's just not, now I'm going to my story. This isn't about my story. This is about your story. <laughs> I don't have a story. Yeah, you do. <laughs> now, I need a tape. I need a tape. <laughs> There's no story here. Yeah, I was born 
In uh, Hayward? No, I was born in Berkeley, I actually. I was born <laughs> on the river. <laughs> but, uh, well, is there anything else you want to bring I, I just, no, I, I mean, I just think, like I said, you know, you just have to have that mindset of, you know, how am I going to live my life? You know, am I going to allow somebody to hold me down? Or am I going to look at the situation and say, well, how can I change this and make it better for myself? And it's, again, it has to be for you. It can't be for, I can't change for you. Because if I change for you, I'm not doing myself any good. It has to be for me as a person. Okay, so but you did say earlier, like, once you have kids, it's all for them. True. So What you're doing is for them. You're creating for them to be better than you. That doesn't mean that you're instilling them. You know, people will force their kids to follow in their footsteps. You're going to be a doctor like me. You know, you're going to be an attorney. You have to go to high. You have to go to college to do this. And, you know, I'm, like you said earlier, I'm proof that school's not for everybody. Yeah. I'm not a school person. Never been a school person. It's not, I don't thrive in that environment. Some people can thrive in that environment. I'm just not one of those people like that. Does that make me any less um, successful or smart as other person? No, not really. But in some people's eyes, it does. You know, people look at me and say, "Oh, you work at Best Buy," and then people go in my neighborhood, "Oh, you work at Best Buy. You guys doing okay?" I'm like going, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a drastic change. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, well, you know, you, you need anything? Let me know. I said, "No, I don't need anything." Are you sure? Yeah, my mortgage is paid. I'm good. My lights are in my house. My cars are paid for. Yeah, I'm good. Kids are in good Yeah, school. kids are in good yeah, schools. Yeah. I don't know why you're worried about me because I work at, at Best Buy, you know. You think that's like the bad thing? I said, I remember, I don't work at Best Buy. I work at a different division, so I'm, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> All right, so it's not like a Best Buy down at the mall where... It used to not. They changed. It used to be... Um, there's only like nine. There was like there was only like ninety plus stores that have the division I have. It's called the Magnolia Design Center, which is a, the high end division of, of Best Buy. So we do a lot of custom theaters. We do um, home animation. We do lighting control, shade control. We do a lot of big ticket items in people's homes. So we do on a daily basis. So I'm not selling you a twenty dollar DVD player. Right. So when I'm there. Well, I knew that. Yeah. No, but, but people think in their mind, oh, he works at Best Buy, that's what he's doing. No, that's not what I... Right. Can I do that? Sure. Do I help to do it for people? I'll do it all the time. Is that what I'm there for? No, I'm not there for that. <laughs> and you like it? Actually, and I have fun at work. That's awesome. Believe it or not, I actually enjoy going to work every day. That's awesome. It's... Uh, the people I work with are great. I have a great, you know, great um, quality with my, my co-workers, most of them. <laughs> There's always that one. There's always that uncle. <laughs> right. But, um, you know, I actually enjoy going to work every day. Yeah. You know, it pisses me off at times. Everybody gets pissed off at work, but, you know. But other than that, you know, I have, I have a good time. Cool. I always tell my, my, not my straight manager, my regional manager, I say, yeah, when I get pissed off the day, I quit. So every time he goes, you okay? You okay? You happy still? Say, I'm good. As long as I'm happy, I'm good. As soon as you guys make me unhappy, that's when I'm gone. <laughs> there will be no 14-day notice. Yeah, you'll know. So now Dre's, he's done. <laughs> he's reached his limit. Well, I hope that never happens. Uh, no. No, no, I mean, I just hope you walk out on good terms. And I would always be on good terms. Okay. I don't believe in bad terms on anything. Okay. You know, I tell people, you never leave a situation bad because you never know when you need to go back to that situation. Yeah. You know, people want to leave a job and like, ah, F this place and tear stuff oh, up. Man. And then six months later, man, I wish I could go back. <laughs> well, you Some know. relationships are like that too. <laughs> right. Well, you know, if you went out the better way, you might have been able to go back. But right now, it's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you have to leave the situation in the right way. I think that's what, uh, that's one thing I learned being in the music business was that I, I learned that, um, as fast as you go up, you actually come down a lot faster. Hmm. And the people you saw when you were going up and they were going down, <laughs> now it's the opposite yeah. happens. So you got to be sure you be kind and nice to everybody. You never know 
who you know you're going to be meeting with one day. And I've seen that. I've seen guys um, who were like interns at one point. And then I was up at Motown Records one time. And then a friend of mine came in. And I had seen him. He goes, oh, what's up? Yeah, I'm going to go meet with the, another friend of ours. Who actually was A&R at this point. Now, he was an intern. I was A&R. Head A&R guy. And we walked to the office. And I see him. And I was like, you know, this kid was an intern. Now he's like head of A&R. You know, I was getting. We treat him like dirt. He was, he was the intern. That's a and now if you need him now, you're like, you're screwed. Because he's not intern anymore. Right, right, <laughs> right. And you got to treat everybody with respect. You have a spiritual life? I don't know. I mean, yeah, sort of. <laughs> well, what I, I, it's, uh, that's funny. I, I say that like that because um, my wife is very religious. And actually the group of people I have at home, at, well, home in, in Jersey, are that way also. I'm not, it's not that I'm not religious. I don't talk about religion like that. I think there's like a couple subjects that I try to talk with people. One is religion, and the other one's politics. The two subjects I try to stay away from. Because it's crazy. People get pissed off if you talk about religion because they went out, you know, oh, why do you believe that? And I can get that. But we talk about politics. Oh, you talk about it's politics. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> well, so you are putting more weight on the spiritual than the political. Yeah, yeah I would say so. But, you know, my, I, I, I go to church. With my family, all, whatever, all of us go usually on Sundays. We all go. It used to be Saturday nights, but now Sundays. You know, if I'm not tired, we'll go to church. Or if they didn't go Sunday or Sunday night or Saturday night, then I will go with them on Sunday to church. So we all go to church. You know, my kids. I went to Catholic school most of their lives. So yeah, you know, we're, all my kids are. Baptized. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't mean there's a spiritual life there. You know? and, and there are. And, well, you know. like, do you, for you personally, and you may, and this could be one of those uh -huh. questions where you say, you know, that's just not going to be answered. <laughs> but do you have a personal relationship with a creator? Yes, with the, yes, yes. Or a higher power of yes. God. Yeah. Absolutely. You yeah. think that's part of why you have your your blessed outlook on life? Of I don't. I, it just is what it I is. I think it's just growing up with the parents that I had and the friends that I had, and and and, and at Hayward, your brother, you know, and seeing the things that I've seen in life from that age on up. You know, it gave my perspective in life. You know, we see, like Aaron and I were joking the other day, said, We've seen how you, my brother, and Scotty B acted. That's what we never liked you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we saw that side of it. You were like, Yeah, that's not for us. You know? Yes. And that's how life is. You learn from experience. So you have experience in your life yeah. that gives you a personal relationship with God. Yeah. Exactly. You're like, Yeah, that's, that's real. Yeah. Huh? Absolutely. Is there anything else you want to... You keep going, man. I, I can't think of anything else. I think we're done. You got to have more questions than that. <laughs> Is it true that Eddie Murphy likes Cocoa Puffs? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Cocoa Puffs. <sighs> With half and half milk. I'm trying to think now. <laughs> Honestly. I actually don't an do answer that question. To be honest with you, I, no I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, That's a good one. I'm trying to think. I should call Bob. Yeah. It's be a Chef Bob used to be one of the chefs. I'll ask him. He'll know the answer to that question. All right, there you go. <laughs> call him up. Bob! <laughs> phone a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Is that <laughs> call us? <laughs> Nobody like Captain Crunch. <laughs> yeah, the berries are plain. Exactly. <laughs> what did what, what he eat? <laughs> Blueberries. <laughs> but I don't know. That's a good question. All right. 
I think we're good. You think? Yes, sir. All right. You sure? I'm sure. You might be another 30 years before you get me again. That'd be okay. I'll travel to <laughs> New Jersey now for the next one. <laughs>